This is a 2 by 72 inch belt grinder that I built based on plans that I got from John Heights at uh, ibuildit.ca. Um, I made a few variations from his plans. Uh, most notably, uh, he made his own wheels, drive wheels and idlers uh, out of wood and I ordered these off of eBay and because of that uh, it made the build simpler uh, and quicker and of course a little more expensive but uh, a few other little changes I made you can see uh, the, 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 the idlers that I bought had their own bearings in them and so I was able to use just plain half inch carriage bolts uh, for axles on them and also John used a plain piece of uh, rod for the drive axle and uh, I got one that had a keyway in it so I wouldn't have to uh, uh, improvise that uh, it was not really a very difficult project there are not a lot of critical dimensions on it and uh, John's plans are very good the uh, the dimensions are a great starting point even if you end up making a few modifications um, something that that you might find interesting about this one uh, is that I used a uh, motor that I got from a discarded um, treadmill now uh, which is pretty cool because it's variable speed and it seems to have plenty of power um, but the key to that if you want to use a motor from a treadmill is they have this transducer and it's going to be mounted somewhere else on the treadmill usually on a pulley or something and there will be a corresponding magnet so the electronics won't uh, without without using the transducer uh, the motor will start and run for a few seconds and, and shut down but it doesn't have to be at the same drive ratio as on the treadmill for it to work so you see I just have this attached to the flywheel on the motor and it doesn't even have to go all that close to the transducer um, within a quarter inch or so is plenty good very simple bracket that I made to do that it's a nice quiet motor and it has this nice soft start feature so that it doesn't come on all at once when you turn it on okay However, then you have to crank the speed up by hitting the, uh, the up button many times to get it going. But, like I say, it seems to work pretty good so far. Um, the tracking is something that, that everything's not perfectly centered, but it's pretty good. Uh, when you're using the grinder, or so far, I have to keep messing with the tracking a little bit to keep it where I want it. And I suspect that even on commercial machines that's probably something of an issue because as the belt warms up and uh, expands and contracts and clearances change, the tracking is going to change. But it's not a big deal. You can see uh, there's a knife blank that I worked on just to try it out yesterday when I first got it going and there are a few details I'll still uh, want to take care of some knobs and handles and uh, a few alignment issues and right now it's just uh, clamped to my bench top and uh, it's a pretty big machine so I don't know exactly where I'm going to put it but it's something I've wanted for a long time and I don't have very much in this, even with buying the wheels, probably $200 maybe. And a commercial machine would be in the $1,000 price range, 
with a motor. So this is a good deal. Again, the plans I got from ibuildit.ca, and uh, I'll put a link in the video in the uh, in the description below if you're interested. But if you're interested in building a grinder or knife making, and you're handy, you don't have a welder and a lot of metal working tools. That you're willing to put a little bit of time, a little bit of effort, spend 20 bucks on these plans, and in a weekend you can have your very own, uh, very uh, useful uh, knife grinder just like this.